Well, I've decided to make my very own game. This is Paradise, a simple island survival to play with friends. My idea was to create a small arcade game for my friends and I to play which had a level of competition and survival element. Part of what makes this game different is the way that players actually win. A group of players crash on an island and can choose to work together or against each other. Players can craft tools, gather materials, and build houses to stay safe from other players or creatures. The goal is to gather the materials to craft a radio transmitter, which will broadcast a distress signal and prompt a rescue helicopter to rescue the players. But here's the catch. The helicopter can only rescue some of the players, meaning people will get left behind and will inevitably lose the game. Players will have to pay attention to their surroundings, as animals, players, and even zombies, which come out at night, will try to kill them. They will also need to pay careful attention to the status of the radio transmitter, because once the helicopter is called, there will be a limited time to get to the rescue zone. There's a lot to manage all in a fast-paced window of time. I haven't decided how competitive or casual I want the game to be, so I've just been modifying the strength of tools, enemies, and spawn rates until I find numbers that feel comfortable for me. Anyway, it's a fun game so far, and I'm going to be looking forward to releasing it. The rest of this video will be discussing the process of development. The first step was making the island, of course. In Unreal Engine, I started with a landscape surrounded by water. The next step was to procedurally spawn trees, rocks, and other collectible materials for players to use. This was done using a big grid at the top of the level, then a line tracing down towards the island to spawn things on the ground level. This is a good way to do it because you can control how many things spawn while also setting limitations to prevent underwater trees or controlling the probability of certain spawns. After that, it was time to create some simple user interfaces. This included designing the inventory at the bottom of the screen, a crosshair for the middle, and some other widgets that exist on the heads-up display. It was also time to set up a system for players to pick up objects in the world, then design a crafting menu for them to make tools. Tools like this hatchet are used to gather the materials that randomly spawn on the island. I stretched out big cones that represented trees, which the player could smack with a hatchet and then cut them down, giving the player wood in exchange. Everything at this point was really just a placeholder. My friend and I spent some time testing the game in multiplayer, which gave me a lot of insight on how much work networking a simple game like this can really be. At this point in time, I hadn't really done much testing with the strength of non-player enemies, and in this match we both died to a wolf because wolves were incredibly overpowered in the early versions of the game. Balancing games is extensive, but it's pretty much as fun as it sounds. I enjoy playing with the variables in my own code because I'm making game-breaking changes in statistics without ever actually even touching the code base. Next up on the laundry list was to create a build system, something that allows players to build structures out of wood, stone, or metal. This uses line tracing and a very basic grid system that spawns destructible actors into the game and serve as a good way to affect PvP or to protect players from enemies that lurk outside. At this point, the gameplay was almost finished. My goal was to then start importing assets that would make the world look a bit more interesting rather than a bumpy grid land with cones and other weird geometry protruding out of it. I started to import models for animals that actually looked like animals. Up until then, I was just using spheres to represent enemies. I pulled a lot of models from the Unreal Engine marketplace, and that really helped bring life into the world. Next, I had to do something about the cone trees. Immediately after finding some good and tropical looking trees, I changed out the model from the tree actors to actually look like trees. Next, I added a basic grass texture to the landscape, and then I changed the structures to look like real structures rather than gray squares. I got a bit carried away with the build system and also decided to add a feature where players could craft and then spawn furniture. This seemingly useless feature would actually come in handy when it came to spawning items like campfires into the world, which helped to light up the room in the dark nights. I added in the monsters, created a bow and arrow tool, and started really touching up the island. I pulled some assets from Quixel to fill out the pickups that spawn in the world too. It was coming together quite nicely. I took a break from importing assets and filling out the world and decided to move to user interface. I always enjoy putting together simple looking UI that's also navigable for the users. When it comes to user experience, I tried to add back buttons on all the dialogue to keep a red route for players so they didn't get cornered into a dialogue box they didn't want to be in. 
Also, can we take some time to appreciate how awesome that background turned out? It was made using actual screenshots from the game that I image traced in Adobe Illustrator, then layered them in UMG to follow the mouse movement. The parallax effect really made it pop, and it turned out really nice, especially since I had no idea what I was going to do for the main menu. I'm happy with the way it turned out. After finishing up the UI elements, I started to touch up the art again. I added a simple animation blueprint for the player using some default animations from Mixamo. I was also able to import a lot of characters from Mixamo, which made life a lot easier for not just animations, but having interesting looking character models. Is that helicopter flying backwards? Yeah, that was a bit of an interesting bug early on. Fun fact about the helicopter. To make the blade spin, I actually rendered a keyframed blade spinning in Blender with the motion blur setting checked in the render settings. This allowed me to render only one frame, but then take it into Unreal Engine and spin the UV map over time in the material blueprint. There are no movable components or meshes that are spinning at all. The only thing that spins is the UV map. One of the things I really don't enjoy about FPS games is actually making the FPS arms. I put this off towards the end of the project because although it's really not that difficult to do, I just find it really tedious to animate different actions when all you really have to work with are the forearms and hands. Plus it takes away a lot of time from other things that I prioritize since I already had the third person animations I needed. I love satisfying first person animations, but I definitely don't enjoy making them. But it was very satisfying to finally see the right side of the screen occupied with the tool in hand though. Other than some last minute level designing, extensive playtesting, and adding a few more simple features to the game, it was safe to say after roughly four months of hard work I had completed my first real video game. The game is currently on the Steam platform, and I will release it into early access pretty soon for those who are interested in checking it out. I've put a lot of effort into this and I'm proud with how it turned out. If any developers have any questions about certain mechanics, feel free to drop them in the comments section, I'd be willing to show you how I made a lot of this. I really hope to see the game grow into something, and I think it would be very interesting to see a bunch of people enter a server with so few actually winning. The game design really reminds me of the battle royale genre, but with a survival twist. Thank you guys for checking out the video, and I hope you check out the game too. Let me know what you think about it, and I'll see you next time.